Hello, welcome to Daily Prayer today for August 21st, 2020. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. We pray to you, O Lord, you hear us in the morning. At sunrise, we offer our prayer and wait for your answer. Our hymn today is God of the Ages, whose almighty hand. So we will try this out. Again, it's written a little bit high, but that's okay. God of the ages, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the starry band of shining worlds in splendor through the skies. Songs before thy throne arise. Thy love divine hath led us in the past in this free land by thee. Our lot is cast. Be thou our ruler, guardian, guide, and stay. Thy word, our law, thy paths, our chosen way. Oops. From war's alarms, from deadly pestilence, be thy strong arm, our ever sure defense. Thy true religion in our hearts increase. Goodness nourish us in peace. Refresh thy people on their toilsome way. Lead us from night to ever ending day. Fill all our lives with love and grace divine, and glory, love, and ever, praise be ever thine. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O Lord our God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism you have poured out your grace upon us and claimed us as your beloved people. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to love and serve you always and to love and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today are Psalm 130 and 148, Job 2, 1 through 13, Acts 9, 1 through 9, and John 6, 27 through 40. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch 
in the morning, for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. From Job chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down in it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity. Although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason, Then Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin, all the people have they will give all the people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to his face, to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he is in your power. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of all these troubles that had come upon him, each of them sat, set out from his home. Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite. They met together to go and console and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize him, and they raised their voices and wept aloud. They tore their robes and threw dust in the air upon their heads. They sat with him on the ground seven days and seven nights. And no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now he was going along and approaching Damascus. Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked. Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told where you are to, what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. 
Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So the, they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. John 6, chapter 27 through 40. This is Jesus continuing to speak to the crowd who has pursued him. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What signs are you going to give us then, so that we may see and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the man in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, continuing on in Job. Job has been cursed. All the things that he has has gone away, but he has not himself been uh, touched at all. And so we go back into the throne room of God, and it's the same exact setup, where God is there and, and holding court before all of these, these heavenly hosts. And the Satan comes and, and says, you know, it's because you have protected his body that he hasn't cursed you. If, if you do that, if you curse his body, if you harm him himself, he will curse you. So God says, fine, I will do that. And he has these sores that cover his entire body from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. It's so bad that he's taking a potsherd, a, a broken piece of pottery, and he is scraping at his skin. Yeah, gross. Um, and his wife, he, she says to him, just go ahead and curse God. Just get it over with. Let God strike you down dead so that you don't have to suffer this anymore. And he, uh, he says, you're a foolish woman, right? That's not what I'm going to do. Then his three friends, all of which have strange names, even to Hebrew and strange, we, we don't exactly know exactly where these, peop these places are, but they gather together to sit with him. They see him, they don't even recognize him, and they wail and they weep for all that has happened to him. And they go and they sit with him for seven days and seven nights. In this, they are good friends. They sit with him and sit in and amidst the, the pain and the turmoil that he is going through. So often we, especially as 21st century Americans, we are so uncomfortable with silence. We don't know how to just sit with someone and listen to them and not have to say anything. It makes us very uncomfortable. His friends, they sit with him, and they know that they don't have anything to say, so they will be quiet. In fact, I believe they will let him say the first words, which is just interesting. Now, when they start to talk, they're not as, as helpful, but at this point, they are good friends. They're coming to be with him, to grieve with him, to sit with him. Then we have, in the book of Acts, we have Saul. 
Saul is on his way to Damascus. He's been given authority to arrest any of the people who are believers there, men and women. And on the way, he meets Jesus. Jesus strikes him down, says, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? He says, I'm the one you're persecuting. I'm Jesus of Nazareth. Go to Damascus like you planned, but stay there until you are informed what's going to happen. And he realizes that he's blind. The people with him, they were not able, they didn't see any of this. They maybe heard the sound, but uh, they don't know what's going on. They just know that Saul, the guy that they're following, is all of a sudden blind. So they take him to Damascus and he sits and he fasts for three days. He's in self-contemplation. He's, he's considering all of this. He has been pursuing the church now for, we, not, we don't know exactly how long, but a significant amount of time, it seems. He's, he's felt pretty comfortable with how well he's done in Jerusalem. He's now going off to other towns to go and find believers. So he is going off and he's doing this, right? And then he is met by this divine vision of Jesus of Nazareth there from the right hand of God saying, why are you pursuing me? Why are you persecuting me? Don't do this. I have this special work for you. So he has now been in fasting for three days, and we'll see what happens to him next. Then we have in John, Jesus is continuing to talk with this crowd, and he has just said that they are only following him because they gave him food. And he says, you know, what's better is to do the things that God wants you to do. And the thing that God wants you to do is to believe in the one who sent him. And they say, well, give us a sign. Give us some reason that we should believe in you. Hey, I know. I've got an idea. Moses gave us food in the wilderness. Why don't you do that? Let alone yesterday he did that for them. He's just, you don't understand it. The food I'm going to give you is, is food for righteousness. This is the, the true bread that comes down from heaven. It gives for everyone, right? Go, okay, well, great. Give us this bread. Sounds delicious. He says, this bread is me. I am the bread of life. This is the first, I believe this is the first of the I am statements in John's gospel. There are seven of them. Oops. Apparently my thing is saying things to me. Um, Jesus makes these I am statements using the divine name of God. I am Yahweh. Um, I am the bread of life, he says. I am the one, the thing that God gives to give sustenance. Those who eat me will never be hungry. Those who drink of me will never be thirsty. It's kind of a weird statement. Um, and we'll see as this, as he continues on in this sort of tact and, and using these types of words, there are people who are not going to like it that very much. And so we're going to see that. But Jesus is the bread of life. This is absolutely sort of pre-figures, pre, um, a pre-understanding of communion where we gather together and eat the bread and drink the cup. It's interesting that this is actually where John's gospel roots the communion. Um, the Last Supper is just a regular supper, and he washes the disciples' feet. There's not an institution of the Lord's Supper, but we do have this, I am the bread of life. Um, those who eat of me will never be hungry again. So those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life, which we have received by your grace, and the new life you give in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the ministries of compassion, witness, and service. Those who make and grow the things we need. the communities in which we live. Strength and abilities to serve you today.
indications of your love at work in the world. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We lift up Scott and Ingrid, who just gave birth to their new son, Jason. We thank God that David G. is recovered from his procedure. For Kathy F., who is back home and recovering. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others and commit ourselves to serve them, even as you have served us in Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Africa. The conservation of the soil, water, and air. Those closest to us in this community. friends and relatives who are far away. All who care for others in body, mind, and spirit. People of God, for what else do we pray? We lift up Mary Beth, sister-in-law of Sue, who has upcoming procedures. For Anita H., Tony's mother, who has been put on hospice. For Chris McSee, friend of Amy's, who has COVID-19. For Mary A. and her foot. For two unspoken requests. God of our salvation, as the light of morning dawns, heaven and earth sing your praise. Cause us to live and grow in faith so that we may bear good fruit for the glory of your holy realm. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to praising the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now may we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for Daily Prayer. Join us next time for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, and click on the subscription and the um, notification button as well. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. Our Our readings came from the Reformed Common Lectionary, Daily Lectionary readings from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And our hymn was God of Our Fathers, Whose Almighty Hand by Daniel C. Roberts, 1876, to the tune of National Hymn. Thank you so much for joining me today, joining me next time, and have a very blessed day. All right. Bye. Wrong button. Wrong button. There we go.